Hello, folks, and welcome back to our coverage here at Gatekeeper Media of the MPO Chase card at the 2022 Open at Belton presented by Discraft. This is our first DGPT Silver Series stop of the year, and we are in our final day at Heritage Park. Special shout out to all of you for tuning in, as well as a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Once again, I am Dustin Murray bringing you the commentary action solo as we find ourselves back in some windier conditions. The area gave our players a bit of a break on moving day, but we're back to some tough wins as Chris Clemens and Paul Macbeth and the rest of our card are just a couple of strokes behind the leader. They are looking to try to make some progress here. As you can see, Dickerson has a pretty comfortable lead at six strokes, but it is very tight in the second position. And so kicking things off here on hole one, it's the 388 foot par three option to go up the gut or to swing out the big hyzer on the right hand side of the fairway. I believe on this day we were dealing with a bit of a tail right to left type win. So definitely giving our players some extra things to think about off the tees. Chris Clemens will lead the way. That is a beautiful shot up the middle. Skipping nicely right near the bullseye. Of course, Clemens had a great day on the chase card on moving day. Lots of big putts. Obviously, big third place at Waco. So looking to continue the momentum. Speaking of momentum, Paul McBeth, the five-time world champ, comes into this year already having one memorial and Waco. So didn't waste any time finding a rhythm here in 2022. So he throws up the big sky hyzer. And just spikes it in the sweet spot. Now we get up to Chandler Fry, who joins our chase card after a bogey-free 10 under par round on moving day. A guy who made some noise last year with some great finishes at OTB, GMC, and Waco. So looking to continue on. The big Spike Heiser himself. Stalling out a bit here, but lands himself on that left-hand side and still inbounds. And now we get back to Bradley Williams. We saw him on our feature card on day one. Comes in ranked 22nd in the UDIS World Ranking. Several top 15 finishes in the tour last year, including a top 15 at USDGC. Zod showing at Waco as well to get his year started. Looking to get something going here off the tee on hole one. A little low out the hand, though. Shook his hand as if he had some grip issues or something, and he's going to get caught up in that. Very nearly found the out-of-bounds. You can see he's just behind it, but a tough scramble now in front of him to get back on the dance floor for par. And a little chip ante forehand will get him where he needs to be. So should be able to find the par save at the very least. Chandler Fry with a tough butt ahead of him here. Headwind. Floats it up there, though. What a nice putt. We'll rewind that one back. A little bit of a right to left win helps it coast right into the center, and that's a brilliant way to kick off your final round. Now we get to Paul Macbeth, who on himself near the bullseye for the birdie putt, and he'll connect. Chris Clemens also very near our bullseye edge. No problem at all for him to find his birdie as well as Bradley Williams will have to settle for the par. It's around 31% of the field was birdieing it this day, so definitely did play a bit more difficult on day three as opposed to moving day. Now we get to hole two, our 492 foot par four. Again, it's all about making sure you hit that center gap make some forward progress, and then handle this down slope on the approach. A bit of a blind shot from certain angles, but the tall flag does give you some indication. And again, it's really just about getting through this first line of trees off the tee as Chris Clemens still has the box. Slight turnover backhand with the right height. will make some good headway. Sets him up nicely for his approach. See how Paul Macbeth wants to handle this. Nice straight backhand. Caught a few branches there, but not enough to really slow it down. Still makes some good progress down the fairway. Still well set up for the approach. 
a little low on a Chandler Fry's hands, and that's going to limit how much room he gets. But actually got a couple of good skips, so still not in a bad position. Here we see Bradley Williams pays himself a nice way forward. And so everyone on the car puts themselves in a spot where they can get up and down for the birdie. We see Chandler Fry up first with the forehand. Comes in a little hot. Gonna have a bit of a tricky uphill putt outside the circle for Birdie. Bit of a standstill here for Chris Clemens. Also juices that one a little bit just outside circle one on that approach. So again, another tricky putt ahead. Bradley Williams, a little low, does get a skip though, rolls down, and I believe that's right near the edge of the circle. Paul McBeth, basically in a putt approach range, will jump one up there. And that'll do just fine, best lie of anyone as we head over to putting. And the Fry floats one up there, gives it a bit of a chance, but will not find the chains, so we'll have to settle for par. <laughs> Jumper for Clemens will connect, though. And again, he had a lot of big putts here on the chase card on day two, and he continues that forward. That's a nice score. Straddle bid from Bradley just a little low. Does stick on the hill, though, so no roll away woes. And we'll be able to get his par. And wow, Macbeth. Looked well inside the circle. Looked maybe just a little left to center. Missed opportunity there. The rest of the card will now start showing up to tap in their pars with Chris Clemens looking like the lone birdie. This did play as the easiest hole on the day. 0. 0.57 strokes under par with 62% of the field finding the birdie. As we now start heading into our third hole here, the ever tricky 309 foot par three with the Mando blocking you from going for the big hyzer. It forces you to navigate through these tight corridors on the fairway. Lots of tree kick threats, some OB to contend with as well. Always tricky to get on the putting green on this hole. We'll see Clemens attack it first. Just gets caught up there on that left side of the fairway, but made some decent progress. Should have no problem finding the par. Ah, flexing forehand from Macbeth looking good, but does get caught up. Oh, and that's looking smooth out of Chandler's hands, and wow! Makes it up there nicely into circle one. Maybe 15 or 20 feet from the pin there for birdie. Bradley Williams hugging near that water line, actually. Looks like he did get back in, though, and he's fine in bounds. But here we see Macbeth with a long putt. Oh, hits the pole up top. Gave it a chance. Stepper for Clemens. Never really had enough air underneath it to carry. We'll have to settle for par. And yeah, Bradley Williams looks like he's in kind of a tricky position here. Puts it up. Oh, just fades out a little early. Definitely looked online for a bit there. And we'll settle close to the basket. And looks like Chandler Fry will get our solo birdie on the card. As only 23% of the field was finding the birdie today as this played just barely under par at .02. We'll see our card finish things off here with a couple of pars. As 
we see Bradley Williams walk up. Things staying tight here on the chase card. So we head into our fourth hole. It's the 445 foot par four tunnel shot. Just try to get yourself near this gate or just pass it to set up the approach to our turtle back green. It's where you start seeing these unique greens. That's a big feature of Heritage Park and kind of what makes it stick out on tour. And that's leaking left for Chandler. Needs to be careful it doesn't go too left and ah, it does. That's gonna be out of bounds. So immediate penalty there for Chandler Fry after a great birdie on hole three. Chris Clemens lacing the fairway nicely and gets a nice little tree kick there. Puts him dead center cut and has a clean approach to basket for birdie. Exactly what you want. See if Macbeth can do something similar. And he actually goes driver, was trying to get a little bit aggressive there. Maybe a little bit too low to push all the way, but still gets out into the open for the birdie approach. Great shot from Bradley Williams as well. So most of the card find themselves in the center. Only Chandler Fry really catching some trouble with that OB. See how he can recover. Yeah, just low. Still able to kick out there though, so so we'll be able to get up and down from there it seems. Standstill toss here from Bradley Williams. Skates up the mound nicely. Great move there. Should give him a great chance at birdie. A little low out of Clemens' hands. Looked like that got knocked down by the wind a bit. Didn't quite maybe push as far forward and skip the hill as he wanted, but still should have a putt. Skates up there as well. Doesn't get too bad of a roll away. But again, with this wind and with it being an uphill putt, still winds up being very contentious to walk away here as Paul McBeth nestles that one up there nicely. And Clemens doesn't really want any part of it. Just lays up. Chandler feeling like maybe he needs to really go for this after the OB and try to limit the damage. Just the right side, though. At least it sticks, but yeah, he's going to walk out of here with a, a big number. Bradley Williams. We'll connect there. So now it's Macbeth looking for birdie. Big headwind though, kind of making him take his time just a little bit, but does find it. That'll be birdie. Clippin's looking to come in and tap in his par. Chandler Fry will find the double bogey. Now we're off onto hole five, a 788 foot par four that has several options, but you do need to watch out for that OB on the right hand side. And once again, we have the tricky green here guarded by those eyelashes on the front side, as well as just the roll away threat of the hill as Paul McBeth takes the box here. Rips one over that right hand side, but Catches a good angle, and we'll skip up there. So always got to worry about turning it over a little bit too much on the right-hand side. It's been one thing we've seen some of our players struggle with. As we see Bradley Williams going for the big sky Annie over the left-hand side. 
And it's able to filter through. Will find himself safe and well up the fairway. Clemens also going out left here with that lefty backhand. Get some good skips towards the center of the fairway. That'll do just fine. Chandler Fry just not sure if that was footing or, or what happened there. I saw him kick the tee after he was done, so I'm not sure if he got caught up, but his disc also got stuck here, and this is going to be very tricky now. Not really a whole lot he could do. Looks like he gets caught up near another tree, so he's still got a lot of work to do, but we'll move over to Bradley Williams, who got himself in the center here, has to punch through these trees. And that he does. It's a good skip forward as well, but still well outside that circle. Didn't quite made the progress he needed to. So we see Paul McBeth. Should have an open look here on this right-hand side. And that too in these windy conditions will fall short of the circle. Clemens trying to swing that forehand out, and it will stable up nicely. This looks great. While he will have to contend with those eyebrows or eyelashes, he will make some progress into circle one. As we get back to Chandler Fry, who's had some awkward footing with that tree next to his lie, and actually pushes the disc deep. So a lot of tricky putts facing our card here. Just a layup for Bradley Williams and does so nicely. Big right to left win, uphill putt here for Chandler Fry. And he too wants no part of this situation. We'll lay up Macbeth's tailwind putt. Puts it up there, but not quite high enough. So he will have to settle for par. So Clemens, our solo birdie look here. Looks like the pretzel sticks here won't really give him too much to worry about, though that left to right win and the uphill putt will. Looked a little low, but does edge its way over the rim, and that's all that matters on the scorecard, as he will take the solo birdie on the card. This is actually playing as the seventh most difficult on the day. Played slightly over par with only 16% of the field finding the birdie. So, yeah, with these conditions, it was certainly no easy task to score on this hole. So we head into hole six, 403 foot par three. This wide left line is the more popular one, but you can see some players go up the gut, and there is some room out to the right, though it is more congested. Again, another unique green with a bit of a ramp here leading up to the basket. So we'll see Chris Clemens take the box back. Decides to go up the middle with a slight turnover shot, and it seems to be stabling up at just the right time, but just quite doesn't make it all the way to circle one. Beth, too, looking to go up the middle. Makes the gap. But just gets tangled up. So that will leave him just approaching for par. Bradley Williams, too, getting through that center gap. Able to get it down before the trees to make some forward progress. And looks to be roommates there with Chris Clemens just outside the circle. see that wide right route being taken by Chandler Fry. Very tough to get close to the basket on this line, but it's a good skip and roll, and by himself just outside circle one, it appears. And Macbeth will be able to approach there to the basket. Should be able to pick up the par. 
Clemens giving it a little bit of a soft bid and catches the rim. Nearly had it fall in. That par will be best for him, as we see Bradley now. Just a little low and a little right. Also a little low from Chandler and a little bit of a nasty roll away. And it is not stopping, at least stays within the circle, but still a tester for Chandler Fry here to salvage the par. But he'll do it just fine, sticks it in. This plate is our fifth most difficult on the day. Only 5% of the field finding the birdie. Well, it's actually only six players in total coming up with it. So again, it's one of those days with these windy conditions where no putt feels like a gimme. Looks like our card will at least walk out of here without taking any damage to the score. As everyone will par out here. So we head into our seventh hole. The 476 foot par three just requires a big hyzer shot to be able to get to the screen. Definitely have to be able to handle the wind and just get the power required to get yourself in that circle. And we know that Chris Clemens definitely has that power forehand capability but slips actually and that causes his disc to take a tough line and he's gone OB on that same spot prior and it's happened again you have to imagine the win and the slip have a lot to do with that as Paul Macbeth lines up that Heiser line looks like he is just short of the circle Putting that out wide. Avoids the tree. Doesn't quite get the ground play he was probably hoping for, so he too will find himself short of circle one. And again, with this wind, just really tough to get here. I believe this was a headwind on this hole. Chandler puts it on a good line, but again, this headwind is just really preventing these discs from making that progress. Clemens, the biggest victim, having gone out of bounds. Oh no, what a nasty little roll there. I believe he's still within circle one, but again, a tester, and I believe that's going to be a potential headwind putt. Now Chandler Fry will just lay up here. Sticks it in the bull's eye, so should be a routine par. Really known in attacking position, though, for birdie. See what Paul Macbeth here wants to do. Definitely a lot of ground to cover with this putt. Tries to float it in there on the headwind, but just falls short. Try to see Clemens try to at least walk away here with bogey. And he will catch the left hand side, so limits the bleeding a bit. After the out of bounds. Rest of our car just looking to clean up the pars. This was the third most difficult on the day with the windy conditions. Only 9% of the field finding the birdie played 0.18 over par. So again, tricky conditions here on our final day of the Open at Belton. See our card tap out with just a couple of holes left to go here on this front nine. And we head into another tricky hole on hole number eight. It's been a tough one all tournament long with it now being a par three, 488 feet. A very skinny fairway with OB left and water right. So you have to navigate through to get to the pin. You can see the big highs are up high or the low line. It just really depends on the wind and the player preference. As Paul is going to put that one out wide and high. 
Trying to stick it near the green, and that he will. That is an impressive shot. Again, a very tough hole. Bradley Williams also going out there. Gets a little bit of turn on the disc. Needs it to fight back. And unfortunately, it will not make it all the way. And that will be an OB he must contend with. This looks to be stalling just fine for Chandler Fry to find the inbounds. And also make some good forward progress. Looks like he has landed inside the circle, so well done. Looks like there was a bit of a tailwind here, kind of helping our players push a little bit further down the fairway. Low forehand line here from Clements. It's turned over, though. Can it stable out? Catches some skips. Oh! Maybe a couple of more would have found them back on dry land, but unfortunately not. So a couple of OBs facing our card here. So that almost looked like a little bit of a run there from Bradley Williams. Certainly had the line. But we'll nestle up there to try to at least escape with the bogey. Same here for Chris Clemens. So we'll get it inside the circle. But here's the birdie look for Chandler Fry. And it will stick. Well played hole here from Chandler. This was also top 10 in difficulty on the day with very low birdie percentage. I think it was just 16% of the field finding the birdie on this hole, so... Very tough. As Clemens will go back-to-back -back bogeys here. A little bit of a tough break in his run as we see Macbeth looking for the bird. And a nice putt there from Macbeth. Puts him at 17 under. Bradley Williams looking to Salvage the bogey after going OB off the tee. A little bit of a headwind putt, so taking his time. Here we go. Hole number nine, our feature hole really 385 foot tunnel shot par three you can see some slight back and turnovers four hands or the roller on this hole just depends on the player see the forehand out of paul's hands but that is rising high needs to make sure it doesn't get caught up but just stays low enough to find it near the bullseye. Well played there from Paul. See the backhand turnover out of Chandler Fry and catches some ground a bit early and kind of stops its progress. Just outside the circle it appears as Bradley Williams will now step up with his forehand. A little low, but that's a nice skip and it's starting to fade. Oh, wow. Some great ground action to keep it afloat, quite literally. We see the lefty backhand here out of Chris Clements. Trying to flex something overstable towards that left-hand side. Able to get some ground action as well, and just outside circle one. So we'll see Chandler here up first. Uphill. Bit of a headwind. Gives it a bit and nails it. What a putt from Chandler. Well, let's definitely rewind that one back. That is a big one. Take a bow, sir. Chris Clemens also finds himself looking for a bit outside the circle. Oh, he catches the basket. Gets a bit of a nasty roll, but... Luckily, doesn't trickle away too far, so still should be able to get the par at the very least. Mm, 
Bradley Williams will sink it as well. Really well done. I believe Paul is very near the pin. Indeed, he is. So, should be a tap in birdie here for Macbeth. A little bit of a headwind, though, so taking his time. But no worries. And we'll find another score here on the front nine. It puts him at 18 under. Clements will knock in the par. And that'll wrap things up here on our front nine for the chase card on our final day of the Open at Belton. Let's take a look here as Paul McBeth finds four birdies and a clean sheet. A couple of problems for some of our other players as they kind of get a little bit halted on their momentum, but still in the mix. We'll take a look at the leaderboard here. You can see Dickerson still has some separation here over Macbeth. Four strokes ahead out in front, but Macbeth has solidified himself in second position with Calvin Heinberg. And we'll see how it all shakes down on the back nine. Definitely make sure you follow and subscribe so you can catch that action coming up shortly. Also, again, a big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters and viewers out there who help make all of this possible. Again, I am Dustin Murray. Hope you're enjoying the commentary. If you want to, you can give me a follow at FollowDust on Instagram and Twitter, as well as Dustin Disc on YouTube. I will be right back on the back nine, so stay tuned. Thanks so much.